Hollywood, the Knox Company, worldwide distributors of scientifically compounded pharmaceutical products, presents Stephen Dunn, star of Columbia Pictures in Deadline Mystery. Lucky Larson's the main columnist for over 250 newspapers syndicated all over the world. You know, usually you have to do a lot of nagging and harping in order to get things done. Any good wife knows that she has to start in on her husband at least two weeks in advance in order to make him go out and get a haircut. Well, that's the way it is with me in this this housing shortage. I've already written many columns on this subject, and I expect to write a good many more before the pigeons have the parks to themselves again. Why do I make it my business? Well, Crunchet huts are all right, but I don't like to see the future generation growing up with nothing better to look forward to than round shoulders. I've been in this particular city now for several days. Right now, I'm in the private office of one Gordon R. Driscoll. Gordon R. is the president of the Inner City Construction Corporation. I figure if I want to get out about housing, I ought to talk to the guys who build them. This is the guy, Gordon R. Driscoll. High-powered, strictly big time. You're wrong, Larson. What you suggest is preposterous. Well, I'll have to admit that it was a rumor that brought me to this town, Mr. Driscoll, but this particular rumor has it that the housing situation here is the worst in the nation. There's an odor of scandal in the air, Mr. Driscoll. Even in the short time that I've been here, I've smelled it. Let me assure you, my dear Mr. Larson, the situation is not as bad as rumored. You'll uh, swear to that? Definitely. There's no actual basis of fact. These stories are simply the work of calamity howlers, malcontents. Oh, hello, baby doll. Oh, who is he, sugar? Who is he? <laughs> Calm yourself, sweetie. Just a reporter. Columnist. Columnist. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Larson, meet my wife, Phyllis. Mr. Larson? Mr. Larson is getting information on the housing shortage, honey lamb. Short houses? Oh, isn't that silly? Not to a guy who has to fit a wife and three kids to a park bench. Gordy will build your house. Won't you, Lammy? Now, sugar, don't worry your pretty little head about business matters. Are you going to be in town long, handsome? If uh, you mean me, not any longer than I can help it. Uh, bring him along this weekend on the yacht, Lammy. Yes, yes, indeed. Love to have you, Larson. Mm, maybe. I'll wager you look divine in a bathing suit, handsome. <laughs> I'm walking back to my hotel now. I'm not the least bit happy or satisfied. Aside from honey blonde Phyllis, nothing else stacks up. My interview was flatter than a Saturday newspaper. And all of a sudden, I have to admit what every other newspaper man has to admit every once in a while. By following this rumor blindly, I played myself for a king-sized chump. I'm back in my hotel room now. Somebody's knocking at my chamber door. I go over to open it, half expecting to find the raven. Well, George, George Harris, you old son of a gun, come on in. Thanks, Lucky. I worked with George when I was a leg man in the big city. George came to this town, married, settled down. He's managing editor of the Times News. My column runs in the big opposition paper owned by J. Nelson Bostock. Bostock owns 11 other papers, too, in 11 other cities. <laughs> George, if you're trying to cop my column for your sheet, it's no soap. You know, I've got a contract. Sure, I'm running the Times News, Lucky, but they handed me a wormy apple. The paper's in the red. They put me in the saddle as a last resort, and already I got blisters. Well, is there anything I can do to help? I don't know. I've been trying to build up the Times News, Lucky. Trying to do some good for this town. Yeah, you would. So, I've been digging into this housing mess. Oh? And it's all of that, Lucky. It stinks. Yeah, yeah, I smelled it, too. I had a hunch that's why you were here. Dirty politics, George? No, it's a group outside of politics. They've kept the city from awarding paving contracts. They've killed the lakefront project. They've lampooned two big housing deals. Yeah, who was uh, promoting the housing project? A uh, citizens' committee. A bunch of square, honest guys. What's the monkey ranch? Apparently, whoever's behind this thing is trying to stifle all competition. In the end, they'll get the jobs themselves at their own price. A stuffed price. Uh, I see. Who's doing it? I know everything but the names, Lucky. And I'm just a step away from discovering them. Want to help? Brother and how? How about your own paper? They won't like you working with me. Oh, boss talk will blow his cork, sure, but he'll get over it. Yeah. Well, come on, let's go, huh? Sorry, Lucky. The only place I'm going is to jail. What? Yep. I've been framed, Lucky. That's why I need you to carry on. Well, maybe we can put the frame around another picture. I've done it before. Maybe you can. I'll be hanging in the museum. Oh, come on. Tell me. What's the rap? Twenty minutes ago, I walked into my room at the Meadowbrook Hotel. There's a girl lying up in that room, Lucky. All she's got on is a nylon slip. And somebody ripped a big hole in that with a knife.
Now, here is a message of special importance to men and women who suffer from backache, to people who feel nervous and jumpy, people who are losing their pep because of restless sleep, people who get up in the morning as tired as when they went to bed, to people who suffer from muscular aches and pains and feel a lot older than their years. If these conditions arise from an accumulation of excess acids due to a non-organic and non-systemic disorder of kidney function, the very first dose of the diuretic formula called Systex, C-Y-S-T-E-X, usually goes right to work helping nature clear away irritating excess acids and poisons. And this natural action may quickly bring an almost amazing increase in pep, a delightful easing of backache, nervousness, and a handicapping muscular pain. Then you can feel younger and get more fun out of life. Because it may bring such a vast improvement in your physical well-being, you owe it to yourself to try Systex today. Take exactly as directed on the package. See how fast it works. Your money back is guaranteed unless you're completely satisfied. So get Systex. C-Y-S-T-E-X from your druggist today. See how much Systex may help you. And now, back to Lucky Larson and Deadline Mystery. Yeah, that's a frame. That is a frame. George's wife and family are out of town for the summer. He's rented his home to a family who's in need of a roof, moved into a hotel. A dead dame is found in his room. Yeah, that's the picture that's in the frame. Soroya couldn't have done any better. I don't have to ask this question, but I do. Why, George, why? I'm hot on the trail of the guys behind the housing scandal, Lucky. Too hot. Yeah, I can see that. They figure this stunt will cool me off. Yeah. By discrediting you personally, they'll make your stories in the Times News worse than nothing, huh? Why'd he come to me, George? You aren't just a local guy. Your column is printed all over the world. People will have to believe an outsider. Tell me, who's the girl? Do you know her? Of course. Her name is Wanda King. Has she got an occupation? Uh-huh. Singer at the Crinolin Club. Reputation? Lousy. Who's her real boyfriend? A small-time hood named Spike Morgan. Not too bright. Have you notified the police? Not yet. I wanted you to know first. I was afraid they'd hold me where I couldn't talk. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. You will help me, won't you, Lucky? You'll blow this thing wide open? Oh, George, you know I will. Okay, where's the phone? Right over there on the desk. All right, you guys, don't make a move. Well, friend of yours, George? Spike Morgan. Do you uh, have to wave that gun, Spike? Okay, you dirty louse. You made well enough fall for you. Then you bumped her off. Give her my regards, because you're going to see her in a few seconds. Now, wait a minute, Spike. You Shut don't... up, wise guy. Get over there alongside of George. You're going, too. This doesn't look so good. Spike must have really loved that day. He thinks George killed her. He's squaring it the only way he knows how. Yeah. Yeah, the final curtain is coming down fast. That is, unless... Look, you got this all wrong, Spike. The girl in George's room isn't Wanda. She's a dame from the East. That don't go. I've seen her. Oh? Yeah. I go into George's room with a skeleton key. It's Wanda, all right. How'd you know George was here? He told the death clerk where he was going. That's right, Lucky. I figured in case the body was found before I called the police, this way it wouldn't look as if I was running away. That's enough, Gam. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let you have it. Spike's gun comes up. He's got tears of honest rage and anguish in his eyes. Yeah, you really must have loved that gal. There isn't one thing I can do, not one little thing. But Spike doesn't pull the trigger. Instead, three cops walk in. Spike dives for the fire escape and makes it. All right, Harris. We found the dame. You're coming with us. Sure, I know. And it won't make any difference to you guys that I didn't do it. I mean, how did the law get wind of this? Chambermaid saw the body. Called in. Now, look, officer, I'm a newspaper man, too. George here didn't Oh, is that so? I know all about you press guys. You throw some pretty wild parties. Maybe you was with Harris when that dame was killed. Maybe you killed her yourself. I know better than argue with a cop in the performance of his duty, so I go along. Watch the sergeant book both George and me on suspicion of murder. A couple of hours later now, I finally managed to get myself unbooked. George is hooked solid. He knew he would be. I leave the local pokey in anger in a taxi, head for the Sentinel. The Sentinel's the local paper that carries my column. Yeah. Yeah, any time a newspaper man gets into trouble instinctively, he heads for his own paper. But this time, I should have stood in bed. I pile out in front of the Sentinel building. I pick up an edition of the paper on my way in. I'd be a liar if I didn't say I turned to my own stuff first. Yeah, I turn all right, but... But my column isn't there. I walk into the office of the managing editor. I ask why my column is missing. I'm told my copy got in late. I ask to see the Sentinel's owner, J. Nelson Bostock. I'm told that nobody sees the great white father. Not ever. Well, I've been brushed off quicker, but never better. I dust myself off and run right into Sandra Bostock, the great one's red-headed niece. Brother, does she carry what she's got well? She plans it that way. Lucky. What are you doing in town? Oh, hiya, Sandra. Unky's throwing a shindig tonight. Why don't you drop over? Sorry, Sandra, I'm busy. 
I gotta see a man about a man who left a girl in a man's room. I try to another cab. I try to think. As much as my worn temper will let me think. I know that George Harris has told me the truth, what there was of it. Even he doesn't know the details. I'm not gonna get any help from my paper, I can see that. I'll have to go it alone. Where'll I start? And the only source of information I know, the Crinoline Club. The place where George says one de King used to warble and wave fans. The Crinoline Club is neither good or bad. I look it over and ask a waiter for the boss. And a well-dressed, well-built gent steps up to my table. I'm Ralph August. You wish to see me? Yeah, yeah, sit down. Have a nip out of my bottle. That is, if you can stand your own stuff. <laughs> sure, I don't mind. The name is Lucky Larson. I'm a columnist. Well, what do you know? This place has been full of reporters since Wanda's body was discovered. But I hardly expected a celebrated guy like you to come snooping after news. Tell me, uh, haven't I seen you somewhere before? I don't think so. Why? Oh, I don't know. Just that I rarely forget a face. Uh, then he must have been somebody else. Now, uh, what can I do for you, Larson? I don't figure it's a good plan to tip my mitt not at this point. Tell me, what do you know about this, uh, this George Harris and this Wanda? Yeah, that's the old story, Larson. Harris is a married man. He falls for this babe. He used to come to the club, you know. I've seen Harris and Wanda sit here and talk by the hour. Well, they didn't have to be talking about love. Well, I figure that Wanda probably threatened to tell Harris's wife when she got back to town. So, Harris killed her. Uh, that's the way you figure it, huh? Yeah. That's how I figure it. And Harris is well off being in jail right now. Well, why do you say that? He'd be dead if Spike Morgan got to him before the cops did. Suddenly, I want to ask George some more questions. At the jailhouse, I meet my copper friend again. You back? Yeah. What do you want this time? A little talk with Harris. Harris isn't receiving this evening. Why? Orders. Whose orders? Just orders. From way up. What would I have to do, say, if I really wanted to talk to George? <laughs> nothing at all. There's nothing you can do. In other words, the no visitors sign has my name typed all over it, huh? Well, now, you can jump at conclusions or you can jump out the window for all I care, but you don't get to see Harris. So what? I can't knock down the county jail. On the street, I pick up tonight's edition of Tomorrow's Sentinel. George Harris is plastered all over the front page. Bostock must have really gotten out the whip. He's whipping Harris to a pulp. No guy can be that bad. I start to pitch the paper away before I retch, and on second thought, I turn to my page. It... It isn't my page. No column. I get it. The Sentinel is crucifying George. Somebody framed George because he was working on a housing scandal. Both of my columns were on the same subject. Bostock doesn't want to print them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll go to a party. Jay Nelson Bostock's butler is shocked. I'm not in tails. His nose scrapes plaster off the ceiling. When I fail to present a gold-plated invitation, I'm going to get the bounce, it looks like, but... But the round and fully packed Sandra rescues me. I knew you'd come, Lucky. You couldn't resist little Sandra, could you? Well, my resistance is low tonight. <laughs> Let's go out on the side porch. There's a lot of things I want to talk to you about. I look at the side porch. It's dark out there. Uh -uh. I'm only human. Right now I'm pressed for time. Uh, some other time, honey. Right now I want to see your uncle. He's in the study with some friends. I'm uh, going in. <laughs> uncle won't see you. He never sees you. I him. know, I know. But this time it's different. I'm going to see him. I push into the study. Jay Nelson is here, all right. Also, Gordon R. Driscoll, president of the Intercity Construction Corporation. They're having sherry and chess. Bostock looks up coolly as Driscoll allows himself to be checkmated. <coughs> what is it you want, my man? I want to see you. No one ever sees yeah, you. Yeah, 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 I know. Well, you said for? This guy's seen me 50 times. What the heck? I'm Lucky Larson. Larson? Oh, yes, Larson. Uh, I didn't realize you'd been invited. I was. <coughs> However, this time I hear on business. I never discuss business with my employees, even in my office. Look, I'm not one of your employees, Jay Nelson. It just so happens that my syndicate supplies your paper with my column. I'll probably correct that. My 12 newspapers. Okay, your 12 newspapers. What I want to know is why my column was dropped from the Sentinel for the last two days. If this is a personal matter, Nelson, perhaps I'd better leave. Well, sit where you are, Gordon. If anybody leaves, it'll be this young upstart. I'm not leaving until I get an answer, J. Nelson. Th then you shall have it, sir. Your column was dropped because the Sentinel is my newspaper. As a publisher, it is my duty to the people to print the things that they should know. Such as? Your column, sir, contains scandalous untruths. It was designed to stir up the people, to play on their credulity over this, this so-called housing difficulty. 
The Citizens Committee's projects were misguided from the very first. They were impractical. And they definitely interfered with the most sacred of all American institutions, that of free enterprise. If you don't mind, Nelson, I, I, I'd better go. You say where you are. Why is the Sentinel crucifying George Harris? It isn't doing anything of the sort. The Sentinel prints only the truth. The truth? Is that why you convicted Harris this evening in your headlines? The only evidence you could have possibly had was that George had been arrested. Is this the way newspaper men treat other newspaper men in this town? How would you like to be in Harris's shoes, Mr. J. Nelson Bostock? How would you like to be hanged for telling people what you think the people should know? I should never allow myself to be in that position, Mr. Larson. A Bostock is not a murderer of hunky-tonk women. J. Nelson presses a button. Two big six-foot tours clamp right on me. There are no rough words, no plebeian scuffles. I'm not thrown out. That'd be vulgar. I'm carried out, daintily, and dumped on my face on the street. <laughs> We pause now for a suggestion and a recommendation that may be important to you. You've heard about Systex for backache, for muscular aches and pains, for nervousness, for loss of pep and sleep, for that tired, worn-out feeling when due to a non-systemic and non-organic disorder of kidney function. But have you tried Systex? That's spelled C-Y-S-T-E-X. Until you do, you can't know how fast it may work to help nature curb your backache and muscular pains, bring you greater pep, allay nervousness, improve your physical well-being. Clinical tests in many cases, even on people up to the advanced age of 80, prove that Cystex helps a high percentage of those who give it a fair trial. And because Cystex is so successful, it is now one of the accepted medicines in many countries throughout the world. For over 20 years, Cystex has brought joyous help to millions of men and women. So surely you'll make no mistake in at least giving Cystex a fair trial under the guarantee of money back unless completely satisfied. So get Systex, C-Y-S-T-E-X, from your druggist and take exactly as directed on the package. See how much Systex may help you. And now back to Lucky Larson and Deadline Mystery. The only place left to go is my hotel room. I open the door and... And here, sitting in my one and only chair, is George Harris. I got bailed out, Lucky. It was high, 100,000 bucks. Who did it? You got me. It was done by remote control. The jailer thought it was the citizens' committee. Oh, was it? Uh-uh. I phoned them. They say no. Look, George, you got to talk fast. How well did you know Wanda King? Uh, pretty well. She gave me a lot of leads on the housing deal. She was going to tell me names. Had she fallen for you? Now, come on. I want the truth. Yeah. But I let her know it was no dice. Where'd you get her information? Overheard what the customers talked about, I guess. I see it all now, George. The guys who framed you tipped off Spike Morgan that Wanda was in your room. They figured Spike would do the rest. They're the guys who bailed you out, George. Bailed you out to be killed. They figure Wanda did tell you the names. Lucky, I'm scared. You must have some idea where the trail was leading. Well, yeah. Pointed toward the Intercity Construction Corporation. Well, that's the outfit headed by Gordon Driscoll. But Lucky, they're all solid citizens. Okay, okay, so it's screwy, but it's the only lead we got. You stay here, George. If you want to be alive when I come back, don't answer to anybody. Not unless you're sure it's me. A good newspaper man gets to know a lot of bad people. I know one in this town. A crib artist by the name of Oscar. Retired. I did him a favor once, so he'll stick his neck out alongside of mine. For a fee, of course. Oscar greases the way into the inner city offices through a window and turns on all his charm on Driscoll's private safe. I'm crazy. I'm even stupid. I can get 20 years for this. I pour through this stuff. Nothing. I pour some more. My flash picks out a name on the paper I hold in my hand. J. Nelson Bostock owns one-third of the stock in the inner city construction company, it says here. Well, I cram the paper in my pocket and start out as I pass Driscoll safe. My elbow knocks a picture onto the deck. I listen to see if the crashers brought the watchman. Then I pick it up. In the dim light, I... I get a start. It's the picture of Phyllis Driscoll, Gordon R.'s wife. But for a second, I think it's somebody else. Brother, if that's it, it has to be it. I kiss Oscar goodbye with the 20, break all records to the Times News, the devil with the Sentinel. I find it in the morgue. It happened in 33. Well, I got it now. All I got to do is prove it. Right now, I'm back in the Crenelon Club. The boss, Ralph August, greets me warmly. Back again, Larson. Have a drink on me this time. Sorry, August. Heaven time. Where's your phone? Phone? Yeah, I got something so hot, it'll blow this town wide open. On the housing scandal? Yeah, yeah. Where's the phone? Well, here, use the one in my office, old man. Get George. 
Hello, George. Lucky. Listen, but don't talk. Meet me in my hotel room in half an hour. I sing so long to Ralph August and blow two blocks down the street, I nickel a phone booth. Hello? Jane Nelson, Barstock? Lucky Larson speaking. Now stop sputtering. If you know what's good for you, you'll be at my hotel room in just one half an hour. Well, in that case, look for your name and headlines tomorrow morning in the Times News. It'll look great. Columnist connects Jane Nelson Bostock with the murder of Wanda King, ex-honky-tonk girl. I'm back in my hotel room now. Who is it? It's me, George. Lucky, open up. Hey, what's up, Lucky? What's the game? Quiet, quiet. Somebody right behind me. Just a minute. Oh. Oh, the great white father. Come on in, Jane Nelson. Going mad? I've canceled your columns from every one of my papers. I'll run you out of the newspaper business. Yeah, I'll look at this, you. big stuff. The notes on tomorrow's column. Wait, I'll, I'll read it to you. J. Nelson Bostock, the man who thinks he and he only should tell the people what he thinks they ought to know, is deliberately railroading a fellow newspaper That's man. That's a de- de- deliberate lie, sir. Why? Because it's just playing pals eluding the people. And Bostock, by suppressing the truth, is protecting their right to loot. At the same time, Bostock is writing his already overstepped... No, you will look here. I've never stooped to graft in my life. Oh, no, then look at this, my opinionated friend. What? I pulled out the legal-looking document that names Bostock as the third owner in Inner City. Where did you get that? That's a fake. I never saw that before in my life. I know it is. But how do you like being frank? I don't know. The penny's worth in that outfit. Sure, sure, I know. If this was on the level, you'd have had this paper in your own possession. I found it in Driscoll's safe. You what? They well, framed you, my friend. If Driscoll's schemes ever came to light, he'd have forced you and your wealth and your paper to defend them, using this to prove that you were his partner in crime. But he couldn't, Oh, yes, he could. You've already convicted yourself, Jane Nelson, by fighting the Citizens Committee's housing project so bitterly in the Sentinel. I I, I refuse to believe it. Okay, so I've arranged...